Hello everyone, my name is Shannon Warren, I'm a Borgen Project supporter, and today I want to discuss with you all the importance of why the United States should actively reduce global poverty. But before I continue any further, what would you say if I told you that the United States made a, world, made a promise to the world in 1970 and that is still unfulfilled? Well, this is what happened when American leaders and other wealthy nations during the 1970s pledged to give 0.7% of their gross national income to international development aid in 2013. Five out of 28 nations exceeded the 0.7%, while the United States only gave 0.19%. Now keep that information in mind, because during my speech there are three key reasons that I want you to remember. The first reason is national security, the second is the environment, and the third is the economy. These reasons are going to be important because these are the motivations as to why the U.S. should be actively reducing global poverty. So with that, I'm going to go into my first key reason, which is national security. The integrity of the U.S. national security sector could be drastically improved if we were to reduce global poverty. When analyzing global poverty, one can find that issues such as increased violence are more prevalent in poor nations. For example, the world's most dangerous nations, such as Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan, are all classified as some of the poorest nations in the world. When aid is given to countries in order to improve regional economic development, not only does the U.S. build alliances, but is able to deter people from joining terrorist groups. But don't just take my word for it. Take the case of Congressman Charlie Wilson. In the 1980s, Congressman Charlie Wilson attempted to appeal to Congress the significance of helping to rebuild Afghanistan after the Soviet Union occupation. Congressman Wilson warned U.S. leaders that if we left people, millions of people, angry, hopeless, and desperate, that no good can come from this situation. However, U.S. leaders dismissed Congressman Wilson, and shortly thereafter, terrorist groups like the Taliban took over the government through coordinated violence and propaganda that promised these desperate people a much needed change. As a result, this provided uh, safe havens for terrorists like Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda to coordinate and implement the September 11th terrorist attacks. In short, if the United States had offered to provide funding for regional economic development to Afghanistan, then it would have deterred many hopeless individuals from trusting the propaganda messages of extremist groups. Ultimately, these incentives would have boosted the, national, the United States national security or reducing terrorist attacks both nationally and globally. My next reason as to why the U.S. should reduce po global poverty is that it will benefit our environment. One of the main issues that poverty does to uh, detriment our environment is overpopulation. And overpopulation damages the environment by polluting and destroying natural resources. In 2015, reports from the UNFPA stated that the average birth rate in developed countries was approximately 1.7 children, but in undeveloped nations, this rate was about 4.3. To demonstrate this point, look at the following slide. This slide represents the family structures of the poorest 2 billion people on the planet. Take note that these family structures are drastically increasing uh, the global population. And as you can see, these, fam these families are not doing anything to help combat overpopulation. Now, 5 billion people have a family structure like this. As you can see, these families are having less children, which just helps to stabilize the current populace. <laughs> these vast differences in birth rates between the most and least developed countries is the result of poverty. Poverty is the root cause of limited to no basic medical care access in a country. When medical access is limited, parents plan to have more children in order to combat the high death rate of children within their country. Conversely, in developed countries, basic medical care is more readily available, which counteracts the notion of having more children to help maintain your family. Moreover, the United States does not aid in reducing global poverty. We include cumulative populations of 48 of the poorest nations in the world will grow from a population of 850 million to an estimated 1.7 billion in, 20, uh, in 2050. Therefore, if the United States needs to be more active in reducing global poverty in order to combat the environment's major instigator, overpopulation. My final reason as to why the U.S. should actively be reducing global poverty is that it will drastically improve our economy. History dictates that U.S. jobs and the economy flourish when individuals from poorer nations transition out of poverty into the working class or the middle class. This is because the lesser amount of individuals in poverty, the more potential uh, people you have of American goods. 
For example, legislation such as the Marshall Plan is evidence of the benefits the U.S. receives through financial aid in other nations. After World War II, when our troops were coming home, they didn't have uh, as many jobs. So what U.S. politicians did was we gave money, 110 billion current U.S. dollars, to nations in Europe, both our enemy and our ally countries. Because of this, we now uh, receive over $240 billion worth of goods annually. Yeah. Even major U.S. companies understand the importance of poverty reduction as a way to increase the U.S. economy. These 50 major companies, American companies, wrote to Congress pleading with them to increase the international affairs budget. This is because one out of every five jobs in the U.S. is export related, as well as over 50% of exports are currently going to developing countries. So if the United States wants to tap into an untapped market of 2 billion people, then the United States needs to upsurge funding into poverty reduction initiatives. In conclusion, ending global poverty is not only beneficial to the people uh, that we give our aid to, but is beneficial to the inhabitants of the United States. As a nation, we have continuously failed our fellow global citizens with empty promises to end global poverty. <coughs> Thus, if American leaders did more to address global poverty, then the United States would not only experience an overall improvement in national security, the environment, and our economic sectors, but we could also be able to claim that we are what we claim to be a global force for good. So does anybody have any questions? Um, here's my work cited. Oh, well. Um, if you, since there aren't any questions, I just want to address real quick. Um, what I'm doing, uh, why I did this is because I have an internship with the Borgen Project. So like she said and many other people, if you're interested in an internship, you can come talk to me. This is one of the 20 articles that I have wrote for the Borgen Project. It's posted on their magazine and on their website. So if you want, if you're going to be a writer, an English major, and you want uh, to start doing writing and to advocate if this is something that you like to do, please come talk to me after class and I can tell you more about the internship. <coughs> Thank you.